Hello, I'm Melissa Doyle and this is Sunday Night. It's a terrible dilemma. A classic case of what would you do? A child, just four years old, suffering from a serious disability. He's distressed, in constant pain, and gripped by violent, uncontrollable seizures. Understandably, his parents want him to be well and happy like other little boys. In desperation, they abandon traditional medicine and turn to a bizarre hippie-style church for help. Here's Alex Cullen. Four-year-old Chase is a very sick little boy. His mother Sinai, father Mark, and sisters Summer and Nevaeh are on the run. You right, Chasey? Chillin'? A month ago, Sinai and Mark took their son out of Brisbane's Lady Salento Hospital after being accused of starving him to death. But they felt the hospital was killing him. Well, we effectively can't go back to our state because in Queensland, they seem to have it in, in for us for some reason. Witch hunt. Yeah. Their escape from Queensland to New South Wales made headlines when an emotional Sinai posted this impassioned plea on Facebook. So come at me, Channel 7. Anyone, freaking anyone that wants to take on the corruption of this shit Australia, I'm down for it. I'm done, eh? This is disgusting. My son deserves the best of the best, and I am his best. I know him more than anyone in this world. They're travelling south to give Chase alternative treatment at a bizarre church. Treatment they believe will save his life. If he's gone, like... I don't think I could hang around, like, it's just heartbreaking. Where's your son? Yeah, that's it. He's my little, he's my little soul. Like, that's what I say to the doctors. He's, he's my soul. He's what pushes me to be a better person. But this untested treatment is highly controversial. Some say dangerous. And as we'll see, the people pushing it don't Welcome scrutiny. This is giving me the shits, Alex, to tell you the truth. Why? Right? Because it's inane and it's off topic. That's why. Right? And usually with these TVs, you do more playing the man than the ball. Chase Walker Stephen was born at Royal Brisbane Women's Hospital on August 29, 2012. The second child for parents Mark Stephen and Sinai Walker. How old were you? I was 21. Yeah. Young? Yeah, young, young, young. Yeah. (laughs) Something you don't expect to happen when you're that young, you just fly through life. And exciting for you, Mark? A son? Of course. First son. Mm. I was cheering because, you know, that's the little boy you teach to chop wood, (laughs) to change oil in your car, surf. That's what I was excited about. But soon, that excitement turned to panic. Two hours after Chase was born, Sinai realised something was wrong. My sister seen him twitching in the left eye. She turned around and said, oh, he's winking. And I'm like, no, no, babies don't have that muscle to wink. Like, that's not normal. I was watching it all, just (laughs) shocked. You knew something was wrong? Yeah, I knew something was up, but I just didn't know what. (laughs) Finally, Sinai was given a diagnosis for her son, severe epilepsy, that was causing his brain to fit every 10 minutes. Sinai called Mark. I couldn't speak. I couldn't tell him what it was. I think he knew straight away when I called him. Mm. Yeah, he knew. Because he could hear in my voice. Like, I just had no idea how to to tell him that, because I knew it would break him even more. Mm. This is supposed to be your... Pride and joy, your, your beautiful, healthy baby boy. Exactly. Mm. Yeah. And that, that was just the start of his condition. <laughs> yeah. The first word, epilepsy. Well, then we'd get to know Chase and Hospital later on, the really serious degree of what he had. That serious condition was quadriplegic cerebral palsy, diagnosed at 15 months. Lift this one up. Yay! Waving! Good job! Let's um, talk about his condition and what, what he can and can't do. What his ails are, what, what, what's, what's going on with Chase. Chase's condition, he can't, he can't walk, he can't talk. 
um, his nil mouth, which means he can't have anything through his mouth, never wiggled his toes, he's never moved his neck, um, yeah, just all the normal things a child would, should be doing, he's never done. For four years, Chase was being treated with conventional medicine and fed with formula through a tube. But he continued to have several violent seizures a day. So I'm not liking where I am and would like to go home as soon as possible. Sinai and Mark believed he not only wasn't getting better, the hospital treatment was making him worse. Are you accusing that hospital of, of killing your son? Oh, that if they, yeah, 100%. They were, they were on the wrong foods, he was on the wrong medication. So, yeah, it was malpractice to the point where he was dying. So the couple turned to this so-called wellness centre in Newcastle. The Church of Ubuntu preaches the health benefits of cannabis and is run by the charismatic leader, BJ Footer. Can I have a joint? No. <laughs> Can you have a joint? <laughs> BJ prescribes strong, unregulated cannabis oil, not the medical variety. Do you see yourself as a healer? No. The plant heals. I'm working for the plant. It's got me in its control, not me in it. And what got you in its control? When I saw the success. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Truth, truth, man. What success? Epilepsy, uh, diabetes, skin cancers, um, you name it. Is what you're doing here legal? Totally illegal. <laughs> when you look at their law as being relevant. On the advice of the church, Sinai and Mark put Chase on a special organic diet and gave him potent cannabis oil at least four times a day. And how did you give him the cannabis oil, Mark? Through the mouth and through his peg as well. Did the hospital know? No. No. How did you know that giving your child cannabis was a good idea? Oh, well, Support. yeah. They're just, just, just sort of researching and looking at other kids going through the same thing. Um, yeah, and it, it was scary. You're giving like... your child under five an illicit drug. Yeah. An illicit drug. Yeah. Let's make no bones about that. Yeah. <laughs> Sinai and Mark claim they saw a dramatic improvement in their son. You look at the camera, Chase, and you tell the world how you feel, mate. You tell him I'm alert, I'm awake, and I'm better than I ever been. His seizures went from almost 100 a day to just a few. But medical authorities became alarmed at Chase's dramatic weight loss as a result of his organic diet. I can see the bone showing through, that the muscles are wasted. It is just such a sad, tragic case. I mean, it gets me. He really looks as though he's come out of a concentration camp. He looks so wasted. Does he seem thin to you? Thin? Um, no, I believe he's, he hasn't got that muscle tone. Like, this is a child that's never touched the ground. Like, he's never walked, he's never rolled. During a routine checkup at the Lady Salento Hospital in Brisbane on April 27 this year, doctors decided they needed to admit Chase for urgent medical treatment. He'd gone from 22 kilos to just over 11 kilos. The hospital accused you, the parents, of starving your child. Mm. Yeah, that, that's a concern when um to starve him, he has to obviously have no food and we were feeding him still. That's a very serious allegation now, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, I know. Still, Sinai believed the hospital treatment would kill Chase. So that day, the family um, packed their car sorry. and fled. I feel sorry for people that have to go to Lay Salento every day, eh? They're evil, man. They're more than evil. <laughs> I'm gonna stop. Did you kidnap your child? No, did not. Um, no, I didn't kidnap him. They drove 800 kilometres to the church of Ubuntu, where we found them hiding out. How much longer can you stay here? As long as we want, I think. Mm. The church are happy to put us up for as long as we want. You know, they're part of our family now. I think as long as we need to is, yeah. the, is the answer. Listen, so how many kids have been in legal trouble? because of medical cannabis use. While BJ runs the church, the driving force behind its philosophy 
comes from deregistered Dr. Andrew Catalaris, better known as Dr. Pot. The term Dr. Pot, how does it sit with you? Um, I mean, I'm proud of what I do, and if people want a more casual introduction, that's what we use it. It's, it's only a name. But Dr. Pot is a controversial figure. He's had a colourful career, arrested at least a dozen times for his unorthodox approach to medicine. I am being arrested for speaking in a state. He was struck off the medical register for the improper use of cannabis and prescription drugs. But now he's treating Chase with cannabis oil containing THC. So the THC is the psychotropic element, is that correct? Well, whatever that term may mean. and it's It a makes term, you high. Well, whatever that term may mean, right? Sex can make you high, coffee can make you high, a lot of things can make you high, whatever that may mean. I find it a meaningless term and one that doesn't contribute anything to the debate. But giving THC to children, What's that's your illegal. problem? What's my problem? Yeah. It's, the medical profession has a huge problem with it. Well, that's their problem. I don't have a problem because I see results. Sinai Walker is in hiding with her son, Chase. How are you travelling, big boy? Mm. He's under the care of deregistered doctor Andrew Catalaris, better known as Dr Pot. This is a great backyard, Doctor. At his home in a quiet, affluent suburb, Dr. Pott is about to share a secret. Do the neighbours know what's happening here or do they know? Right. He's operating an illegal laboratory where he makes potent cannabis oil. Where are you taking me? Well, welcome to our little laboratory here. In a bedroom behind a wardrobe. OK. Oh, gee. You're right. So, Dr. Pot, this is your lab. It is, and um, we, we're very pleased with how it's functioning at the moment. Yeah. yeah. Why is it in this hidden recess of your house? The work we do is very important. It involves the life and well-being of children. Uh, we cannot afford to have our work interrupted by ill-considered police or other interventions. In here, he processes cannabis plants into oil and ships the product across Australia. That's a lot of marijuana. Uh, I wish there was a thousand times more. That will keep several children going for several months, but there are many, many children in need. Dr Potts has treated hundreds of children. Here, big boy. Easy does it. But it's what he's trying to do to help Chase that's raising serious questions. OK, he certainly seems a lot more responsive mm -mm. over the last few days and a lot less traumatised. Yeah, and I think that's got a lot to do, like you said, with the putting it into his food. Yeah. Causing the, like, the digesting to work properly with the cannabis. Mm -hmm. Is he being given cannabis oil containing THC, the part that gets you high? Yes, he's got THC and that, that's for his pain block. So he's effectively high? Oh, I wouldn't say that. He, he's... Um, stoned? Not stoned. I think it's different in these kids, like, because they're so needing this, this core of the medicine. Right. For Sinai, it's working a treat. It's alright. She says his fits have been dramatically reduced. <coughs> but we witnessed one very confronting episode. Push, push, push it out. It's all right. Shh. Oh. Mightn't it his air about. Just swallowed heaps of air. So this we put on to get his air out. We asked Professor Roy Berrin, an experienced neurologist specialising in epilepsy, for his opinion on Chase's seizure. Jesus. Well, you can see that he is, I think, in a seizure from the beginning. I think that's a convulsive seizure. The eyes are rolled up, and you can actually see when it stopped. Relax. God, that's heartbreaking. They're giving him medicinal cannabis that contains THC, the stuff that makes you high. Is it right to be giving that 
to a child? Let's take that question one step further. Is it good to let children get high on anything? And my answer would have to be, no, I don't see the benefit in getting a child to get high. What is driving this huge push to legalise medicinal marijuana? Those people who have children with horrible conditions, where they've exhausted all the available treatments and they've failed, will push to have anything new that offers hope. Wherever hype overwhelms reality, it's dangerous. Don't worry, be happy. But at the Church of Ubuntu, it's not just about the dope, it's organic food and hemp oil massages as well. It's OK, it's all right. It's what the church leader BJ calls a holistic approach to health. What qualifies you and this place to be giving cannabis oil to Chase? My conscience. As a, uh, as a humane being, not a human being. What were you in a past life? I don't think I was. I don't know, mate, no. People ask me that a lot, I don't know. Weren't you an electrician? Oh, you mean one of those lives? You're getting uh, spiritual again. Yeah, fine. No, no, no. OK, no, in my past life, I was a literal contractor, an audiovisual person, yeah. yeah. Right. Mm. Where would you be without BJ, Sinai? Um, I don't know. Like, I would be one sun down, I guess. Avocado is 7 for $10 now. Oh, yay. What's always troubled medical experts about the church's alternative treatment is the food they're giving him, or rather, not giving him. So this is Chase's dinner? Yeah, lunch, dinner. We lunch. make it all the same kind. We just add different things in at different times. So that's the cannabis oil? Yeah, yeah we, we put that one in for um, his digesting the food properly, so it helps. A, what does that stuff mean to you? Life. Life, yeah. Life. Our life. son's life. Simple. You know. There's some dinner. Some yummy food. The diet has healthy ingredients, but Chase's weight is now at a perilously low level. There you go. Is that yummy? What is Chase's diet at the moment? Chase's diet is a combination of fruits, vegetables and hemp seeds. Is that enough for a growing four and a half year old boy? What would you have him have? Oh, there's, there's other things, eggs, there's all sorts of foods, all sorts of whole nutritious foods. Of course it's enough. It's following more closely the dietary guidelines than most people's diets. This is what I find so offensive about this whole episode. Right, the hospital appears to be covering, trying to cover its tracks and its ineptitude and its incompetence. Dr. Potts is very sensitive about any questions regarding his treatments and his past. It is that simple. Last year, he was investigated by the Health Care Complaints Commission, or the HCCC, for injecting untested cannabis oil into two women with ovarian cancer. The Commission concluded, you put your own self-interest in self-protection and self-promotion ahead of the health and safety of two vulnerable women suffering from ovarian cancer. What an ignorant thing to say. If I had put my own interest in self-protection, I wouldn't have done it. And my next this is giving me the shits, Alex, to tell you the truth. Why? Right? Because it's inane and it's off topic. That's why, right? And usually with these f***ing TVs, you do more playing the, ball, the man than the ball. Now, if you want to talk about Chase, get on with some decent questions and stop this crock of shit, because I'm not talking about the HCCC and confounding what we're doing now, right? So pack up or start asking some real good questions. My next right? question was I'm about not, Chase. Yeah, well, that's good. Can you show me how you burp? How much of this is experimenting? All of it. All of it's experimenting. Right? How can it be anything other? Of course it's experimenting. Are you experimenting on Chase? No. Love you, Chasey. G'day, guys. Hey. How are we? But Sinai and Mark have put all their faith in this extreme treatment. You lift this arm up, Wayne. Yeah, Alex is there. Hi. Hello. 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 G'day. How are you? You good? Are you gonna wave? Yay! <laughs> good 
job. Good waving. So we've been practicing that a lot, haven't we? Yes, we have. I can't say that everything's okay. Cause I can see the tears are crying. Chase's life expectancy is unknown. But Mark and Sinai believe they're doing the best they can to ensure he has the best and longest life possible. He loves the sun on his face, so he like looks for it. Chase, yeah. Good boy. That's why we're not turning back. There's no way I'm going to go backwards. That's why we'll keep fighting, because, you know, we know it, we don't care what other people think and they think we're wrong. Like, we've seen the worst of Chase. You know, to see him now, it's completely different. And we have an update on Chase. He has been admitted to hospital and is getting treatment.